Hey everybody, this is Rip Fletching. I just wanted to do a, a, a how-to video on setting up a recurve. Um, this is a, a recurve I just got in today, and I'm going to just go through the basics of how to set this bow up. Um, just for the video, will be a little shorter. I've already actually put everything on the bow, but I'm just going to go step by step how to do that, um, and and what I do and how I do it. <clears throat> First of all, I like to take the recurve, I like to go ahead and, if it's a three piece, if it's a takedown, go ahead and put the bow together. Make sure uh, that there's no burrs um, on the bolts. Everything fits together nicely. That there's no problems in the limbs. Examine your bow very well. <clears throat> then what I do is, um, if you want to come down here, I'll show you this. Uh, on the limb itself, I take just regular Velcro. Okay. And I take, not the male, but the female side, the soft side. And I take with the adhesive back, I put it on the belly of the bow, and it just adheres to it. Then that way your string rides in there. There's a, a natural groove that they build inside the bow, and your string will sit right in that. And when you shoot, it just silences your bow. It's very, very silent if you do that. If you don't do that, the serving, the string on the... Will, will hit this bow and it'll be very loud. Okay, and then this is, um, you've seen me with the um, wool puffs, which, and then this is the, what I call spider legs. It's like what they use on spinner baits. It's rubber. And then I take, this is Kevlar line. It's very, very strong. It will, um, it's so strong it'll cut you. It won't break. You can take this <clears throat> and you just, tie it very tightly around these spider legs, around this rubber here, tie it down real tight, cinch it down several times, then as you can tell on my fingers, I take a drop of super glue and I'll rub it into this Kevlar. It will soak into the Kevlar and make it just an incredibly strong uh, bond. And it'll hold the spider leg where you want it and you measure out the same distance from both limbs. That way it helps with the trajectory of your arrows, it makes both limbs work the same amount on your shots. <clears throat> and you do that to both sides, just the same. You measure it out. Um, a lot of people use, and, and I do also, uh, sometimes I'll take these zip ties, as you've seen, and I'll zip tie these spider legs on. But I'll tell you, um, I just bought these from Walmart. Walmart, you're not going to like this, but they were terrible. Um, they weren't strong enough to hold these on there. I'd pull it down and it would give slack. It just wouldn't hold them in place. So um, if you're going to use zip ties, you've got to get good ones. So make sure you get the ones that are UV protected um, because you're going to be outdoors with this. And I know you guys have heard that um, I don't use brass knocks much for myself, but I'm setting this bow up for one of my students. And um, this, I have a bunch of brass knocks that I bought for my students. The reason I use brass knocks for students is because they may have to move it a little bit for fine tuning when you go to do your paper tuning to make sure everything's lined up just right. I may need to move this a little bit. And um, you just you can just take your brass knot and your knock pliers and um, you take a bow level or a, uh, it, and you take it and you, you clamp this on and it'll tell you um, how high it is. And, and I have this one one fourth above center. So if I snap this on, let me show you here. I lay the level on the bow, which that's just almost perfect there. Snap that on. Let me get this side. Sorry about that. And we snug that down just a little bit. And as you can see, I don't know if the lighting is right in here. Just a little bit less than one fourth. And we shoot three fingers under the way I teach. And uh, that seems to work pretty good. Um, it, it seems to be about right um, for these recurves. But um, it could be with that individual student, the way he may shoot, there may be a little uh, difference in that. So we may need to move this a little bit. Now the shelf. Um, the way I do the shelf <clears throat> is this, as you've probably seen these, they're the felt blankets. Um, they're used for putting underneath table legs and things like that. They're very durable. They're more durable than the Velcro. Um, and what you do is you take that, 
you lay it on the shelf like this. You just lay it on there. You take a marker. You mark around it. You just cut that off. Stick it on here and then it'll fit just perfect. And if there's a, not just exactly right, you can take an X-Acto knife or box cutter, you know, and kind of clean it up a little bit. Now this is the side plate. What I use, I like uh, the calf hair best, but we just picked this up from Walmart. Just got a little bit of the female side Velcro placed on the shelf. And what that's for is to give the arrow <clears throat> a little padding and also for quietness. Like it'll sit there um, very, very quietly. So if I bump this in a hunting situation, it won't make any noise. Also, it will create a little bit, um, depending on how you shoot, um, if you notice I create a little cavity here, that's for the, that odd feather can ride right in there like this, okay? I know a lot of you guys, you shoot cock feather in, but it still does the same thing, okay? So it's a really good way to, to set this up. I like it. This is very, very durable. Uh, it's got a lot of pad to it, which we'll go into later um, about the spine of an arrow shaft, about how you can alter arrow flight by um, the softness or thickness of your paddings that you use. And so anyway, this is a 50 pound bow. It's 62 inches long. Uh, it's a sage takedown. Um, Dimes for Donuts, I think that's the best bow for the price, a little, a three, a little three piece takedown like this that I've found. Um, I really like them. They're pre-tapped with brass inserts for sights or a reel if you're going to do bow fishing or if you're going to use a, um, a physical rest for like uh, bow fishing or, or a, a mechanical drop away. I mean you can do a lot of stuff with this um, with this bow and it even comes pre-tapped and drilled you want to use a counterweight or, or something of that fashion. And then um, this bow is extremely quiet. Very, very quiet. Um, i tell you what. Come on out. It's a left-handed bow, but I'm going to go ahead and shoot it for you and uh, show you guys what this thing sounds like. It sounds great. I mean, you can just barely hear it. So I'll go ahead and grab my stuff and uh, show you how it shoots. So come on out. You get. Uh, let me show you my... I'll show you some of my bows. Of course, this is just some I have. I've got a lot of bows, but this is my Black Widow. And um, this is my daughter's recurve here. And this bow here is kind of a unique bow. It's Osage Orange. And this bow was made, um, I guess, about 70, 72 years ago by one of my patients whenever he was just a child. And uh, they called that old Hedgewood. And he made that bow, and he won four state championships with this bow. And so um, he actually gave it to me um, as a gift, and I have refinished it, and it's just a beautiful bow. But I tell you what, it's pretty ingenious. If I don't knock something over here, <clears throat> I'll show this to you. You see this little contraption here on the side is a sighting mechanism. So he had his yardage written on this tape. And what he could do is loosen this wing nut and slide it to the yardage that he was shooting, tighten it back down, and use it for a sight pin. Very neat. And this is metal. And what he did was just cut this Osage Orange to fit, slid it down in there. And it's very neat, very stable bow. Pretty cool idea, um, you know, to, to think of on the farm to do. All right, come on out and I'll show you this. Getting a walk through here. <laughs> this is the aftermath of a fishing trip here. You gotta that's a sign of a successful fishing trip. Or a lazy fisherman, I'm not sure which. So just come on up. Um, I'll be shooting this opposite opposite handed so we're not gonna be very far back. I just want you guys, I was going to put on the wrong side as a right-handed shooter. So, um, Ariel, come on up here. I don't really necessarily feel me me because you know, I'll be shooting it like I would my bow, but I just want you to listen to it. Very quiet. 
and uh, for you guys can see that she's standing just a couple of feet away from me so when you hear how quiet this bow is and and uh, the little silencers haven't even completely broke in yet so it's really quiet and I'm not aiming guys I'm just flicking them out there for you all right three-piece sage takedown very basic setup like I say, that right there is as deadly as you can get. It's awesome. I mean, you can pay $2,000, $1,500, whatever you want for a bow. Um, and it's, that deer is going to be just as dead. And I'll tell you how accurate this bow is. Um, I had a right-handed model of this. And um, first time I, I, I just I put the bow together, I set it up for a student. And he was like... Um, how accurate is this bow? And I said, well, it should be very accurate. I've never shot it before, but I said, let me let me see it. I put one of my arrows on it, which I don't know if it would be paper tuned for it just right or not. I picked it up, pulled it back at 15 yards, pop, hit a one-inch circle, and I said, wow. Um, you know, it was an accident, so three arrows, one-inch spot at 15 yards, which, I mean, a lot of guys can do that, but for the price... To get a bow that'll shoot like that and they're very fast very quiet i don't think you can beat it sage takedown it's awesome by samic you don't think uh you know those big conglomerates are making some bows <laughs> that'll shoot but oh another thing about this bow is you can get you can upgrade these limbs all the way up i mean you can get all the way to the olympic uh quality limbs for these and you can change these out where they don't look so goofy. I think Three Rivers, you can actually get these in a, like the deer horn of the base, and they're very pretty. So, all right. I'll see you guys. I hope you all like that setup. Um, if you have any questions, you know, you can email me, uh, ripfletching at, at gmail, or uh, just leave a response on YouTube. All right. See you guys later.